Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Camel, but more importantly, welcome back to the Elder Scrolls Detective series, a series in which we investigate, curate, speculate, hypothesize, theorize, and quite often simply highlight and discuss cool, interesting, and hidden things that can be found within the Elder Scrolls games. Today we will be thoroughly inspecting and carefully picking apart one of the most favoured quests in Skyrim to unveil a very likely conclusion of a self-regicidal suicide in a sense via a proxy. For the layman, we'll pose the question, did Emperor Titus Mead II order his own assassination? Sounds crazy, right? Well, there is a lot of evidence suggesting that this theory is true. If this kind of stuff does tickle your fancy, links to my other Elder Scrolls Detective series videos can be found down in the description, along with links to my social media. Be sure to check them all out after this video. Now, this might seem long and crazy at first, but all of this has very, very important details that we must pay attention to. So it all starts during the Dark Brotherhood questline of the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, when Astrid orders us to hide inside the Night Mother's Iron Maiden and listen in on Cicero's conversation. Oh, but how can I defend you? How can I exert your will if you will not speak to anyone? Oh, but I will speak. I will speak to you, for you are the one. Yes, you. You who shares my iron tomb. Who warms my ancient bones. I give you this task. Journey to Wallen Road. Speak with Armand Mortier. Of course, we must listen to the Night Mother, so we'll make our way to Wallen Road just as the Night Mother asked. Found just beyond the merging point of northern Whiterun's tundra and the snow-laden forests of the Southern Pale. Just as was said, an old Nordic burial ruin. Inside we can find our subject. By the almighty divines, you've come. You've actually come. This dreadful black sacrament thing. It worked. The Night Mother heard your plea, Motier. Yes, um, so it would seem. Well, I won't waste your time. I would like to arrange a contract. Several, actually. I dare say, the work I'm offering has more significance than anything your organization has experienced in, well, centuries. Go on. As I said, I want you to kill several people. You'll find the targets as well as their manners of elimination quite varied. I'm sure someone of your disposition will probably even find it enjoyable. But you should know that these killings are but a means to an end, for they pave the way to the most important target. The real reason I'm speaking with a cutthroat in the bowels of this detestable crypt, for I seek the assassination of... the Emperor. You want us to kill the Emperor of Tamriel? That is correct. What I ask is no small thing, of course. But you represent the Dark Brotherhood. This is what you do, no? You must understand. So much has led to this day. So much planning and maneuvering. Now, it's as if the very stars have finally aligned. But I digress. Here, take these. They need to be delivered to your... superior. Rexus? The items. Here. Here. The sealed letter will explain everything that needs to be done. The amulet is quite valuable. You can use it to pay for any and all expenses. An interesting man will ask a few more questions to see all the colours of this painting. Who are you, Motia? Who are you really? I performed the Black Sacrament, contacted you people, because I thought you guaranteed discretion. Is this no longer so? Why do this? Why have the Emperor assassinated? In the year 3E41, Emperor Pelagius Septim was murdered in the Temple of the One in the Imperial City, cut down by a Dark Brotherhood assassin. His killing ushered in, shall we say, a necessary change in Imperial policy. There are those now who wish for a similar change. I am sorry, but that's all I'm at liberty to say. This will require significant compensation. Can you pay the price? <laughs> oh, my furtive friend. When Emperor Titus Mead II lies dead, there will be gold. A fortune in gold. 
but so much more. It is said that the Dark Brotherhood in recent years has been in decline, that you lack the power, wealth, and respect of days past. Is it not so? If you do this, if you kill the Emperor, oh, how the masses will fear and respect you. And you can trust your servant to keep this secret. Oh, Rexus is no mere servant. He has been with the Motier family since I was a child. I trust the man with my life. I have vowed to serve Armand Motier until my dying breath. Best remember that. Yes, so it would seem. So Motier will give us this strange and rather beautiful jeweled amulet to pay for all of the costs. We'll talk about this more later on in the video. But for now, to summarize about five lengthy quests, there are three important parts to this story for this particular video. Firstly, now then, I hope you have something nice to wear, because you're going to a wedding. A wedding? Well, more like the public reception. It should be a lovely affair. You'll mingle with the guests, eat some cake, stab the bride. Oh yes, you've got to kill the bride at her wedding. And they say romance is dead. Well, who's the lucky woman? Who's the target? Her name is Vittoria Vici. She oversees the East Empire Company's business holdings in solitude. The wedding is being held in that city, at the Temple of the Divines. Her death will cause an uproar, which is exactly what we want. Now go, and give my best to the bride. After this, we're set to assassinate Vittoria Vici at her own wedding's public reception. She was to marry a Stormcloak supporter, so her death would create great conflict within Skyrim's politics. With the belief that her killing was driven by the Stormcloaks, the idea of this murder is to force the Emperor to come to Skyrim to settle the aftermath. Secondly, As I was saying, you'll need to kill the Gourmet, of course, but what's more? need to get his writ of passage, so you could take his place. Ah, so the Gourmet is in Skyrim. Yes, Gaius Morrow, on orders from his father, arranged for the Gourmet to come to Skyrim months ago, to serve as the Emperor's personal chef. But the Emperor cancelled his journey at the last minute. Morrow was smart, kept the Gourmet around, in case things changed. Further down the questline, we are assigned to eliminate the famous and mysterious chef known as the Gourmet. We are to then pose as the Gourmet and cook for the Emperor when he comes to visit Solitude, again to rectify the situation after his cousin's assassination. I'm sure I can't be of help. I'm just here on holiday. Soon the Emperor will die, murdered, by the Gourmet. What? The Emperor? But I, I, oh, oh by the gods, no, 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 you can't do this, you can't. Stop right there, the tower is off limits until further notice. Have a look at this, Commander. What's this now? Uh, order of his eminence, possessor of these papers, the Gourmet. By Azra, the Gourmet. I'm... I'm sorry. Your clothes, of course. I... I should have realized. Please, excuse my ignorance. Gianna, the castle chef, has been eagerly awaiting your arrival. You should proceed to the kitchen straight away. I have to say, the stew seems done. Add anything else and we may dilute the distinct flavors. So, is that it? When we get to cook his meal, we poison it. There is one final... to die for... ingredient. Here. Add this. Oh? What is this? Some kind of herb? Are you sure? The potage tastes perfect as it is. Any other ingredient might- Now, now, Gianna. Who's the f***ing gourmet here? Put in the root. <laughs> I'm sorry. Of course, it's your most famous recipe after all. Alright then. Your secret ingredient's been added. And if I may say so, it has been an honor getting a chance to prepare a meal with- well, the best chef in the entire empire. I'll carry the stew pot and lead the way up to the dining room. I'm sure the emperor and his guests are dying to meet you. Ho ho ho! Do you write for camel wax? Jesus, that pun. 
Aha! Here we are, honored guests. I present to you... the gourmet. Ah, the potage le magnifique. So delicious. My friends, as emperor, I of course reserve the right of first taste. <laughs> oh, oh, how marvelous. Just delicious. It is everything I had hoped it would be. It... I... I think something's wrong. I... Once the Emperor, like his food, has gone beyond its use-by date, run. Run straight into a trap. That man was, by far, the most insufferable decoy the Emperor has ever employed. I'm glad he's dead. But I'm even happier that you killed him. You, an assassin for the Dark Brotherhood, just made an attempt on the Emperor's life. Would have succeeded had it been the real man. So it turns out that that was actually a trap, and it wasn't actually the Emperor at all. It was suspicious that the Emperor came to Skyrim right after his cousin was assassinated in solitude at her own wedding. So this was not the Emperor, and in fact his decoy or body double. Again, further down the questline, we are reassigned to assassinate Emperor Titus Mead II, as the contract was never truly fulfilled. By the gods, you, you're alive, but I had heard your sanctuary, please. You mustn't think I had anything to do with that. I wanted the Emperor dead. The true Emperor. I still do. It was Morrow. He... The Emperor. The real Emperor. Where is he? You mean, after all that's transpired, the Dark Brotherhood will still honor the contract? Why, this is astounding news! Wonderful news! The Emperor is still in Skyrim, but not for long. He's on board his ship, the Kataraya, moored offshore in the Solitude Inlet. But you must hurry. If you can get on board that ship, kill Titus Mead II as contracted, I will reveal the location of the dead drop that holds your payment. What kind of security should I expect? Surely you're joking. This is the true Emperor, not some half-septim look-alike. He'll be surrounded by elite bodyguards, I'm sure. You'll have your work cut out for you. Still... Everyone assumes the Dark Brotherhood has been completely destroyed. They may be a bit more lax than usual. And this ship, the Kataraya, how will I get aboard? Well, I don't know. It's in the Solitude Inlet. That's the channel just north of the docks. I suppose you should go to the docks and swim? Please, make haste. The Emperor's ship won't stay moored forever. We won't get a chance like this again. And finally, after a long and eventful questline, we are put back on the Emperor's assassination once more. The Emperor, Titus Mead II, is now in Skyrim, on his ship, the Kataraya, anchored right next to Solitude, the last place you would expect him to be. On his ship, the Kataraya, I did actually find something very strange, which we'll come back to later on, but I do believe that there is actually another assassin on the ship. But for now, the time of reckoning, and the strangest encounter in any Dark Brotherhood quest. Time to meet and say goodbye to the Emperor. And once more I prove Commander Morrow the fool. I told him, you can't stop the Dark Brotherhood. Never could. Come now, don't be shy. You haven't come this far just to stand there gawking. You were expecting me? But of course, you and I have a date with destiny, but so it is with assassins and emperors, hmm? Yes, I must die, and you must deliver the blow. It is simply the way it is. But I wonder, would you suffer an old man a few more words before the deed is done? Hmm, well I am the listener, so yes, I'm listening, Emperor. Well, I thank you for your courtesy. You will kill me, and I have accepted that fate, but regardless of your path through life, I sense in you a certain ambition. So, I ask of you a favor. <laughs> An old man's dying wish. While there are many who would see me dead, there is one who set the machine in motion. This person, whomever he or she may be, must be 
punished for their treachery. Once you've been rewarded for my assassination, I want you to kill the very person who ordered it. Would you do me this kindness? Yes, I'll consider the request and fulfill your great plan. Thank you. Now, on to the business at hand, I suppose. What, you're going to literally just turn around and let me stab you in the back? Well, I won't fight you, so we may as well get this over with. Hmm, that's pretty suspicious. Now, I'm sure it's not just me, but that was a very strange encounter. He was so peaceful and accepting, even saying that he was waiting for us to come, that he wouldn't fight us and quite literally just turned around and let us kill him. I mean, Titus Mead II was a seasoned warrior. At the very least, he could have put up a pretty good fight. So he's a capable warrior, he's got literally no guards within his quarters, and just accepts his death. He didn't fight, he didn't plead, he didn't jump out of the window, which I would have done. He didn't yell and scream, nothing. He just cops his own death. That's a very big warning sign and evidence that he had a hand in his own assassination. So now that we've seen how the events play out, let's talk about the theory. Did Emperor Titus Me II call for his own assassination via a proxy? In this case, Motier. The biggest question of all would be, why? Why would he want to die, let alone be assassinated? Well, the answer is simple. It's martyrdom. To die via assassination would mean he had some fight and was an obstacle for another force to overcome. So his death would leave him as a hero of sorts in the eyes of his people. The next question, why would he need to do this? Well, Titus Me II was a rather unpopular emperor. It wasn't so much that he was a bad emperor, but he just happened to be emperor during some of the most trialing times for the empire in recent history. So in short, Titus Me II wasn't loved by his people. He was emperor during the Great War. Of course, this was between the new Aldmeri Dominion, which consists of the Thalmor, as most people would know, and they were fighting the empire. Ultimately, during the Great War, the Imperial City was sacked by the new Aldmeri Dominion. Titus Mead II, while wielding the legendary artifact Goldbrand, launched a surprise attack and they retook the Imperial City, which is an event now known as the Battle of the Red Ring. However, at this point, both armies were crushed. The best option for both was peace. Titus Mead II signed a document now known as the White Gold Concordat, a peace treaty of sorts, but with very specific terms that were unfavourable to the Empire. The Empire initiated the treaty knowing that, despite a temporary reversal in fortunes, the Aldmeri Dominion were in a position to eventually overwhelm the Imperial Empire. But did Titus Mead have a choice? Keep fighting and lead his people to death, or make peace and let his people live? He chose the latter and signed the White Gold Concordat to make peace with the new Aldmeri Dominion. The blades would be hunted down and killed, leaving the Empire and the Emperor specifically in a weaker state permanently. Southern Hammerfell was to be handed over to the Dominion, which led to a rebellion from Hammerfell and the ultimate denouncing of Hammerfell as part of the Empire. The worship of Talos, the god of man and war, would be outlawed. This is actually a ploy by the Thalmor, as in the Elder Scrolls, the less worship a god receives, the less power that god has. So outlawing Talos worship would mean fewer people would worship him, therefore he would have less power. And now he cannot protect mankind, leaving humanity open for the slaughter, just as the Thalmor want. This outlawing of Talos worship also ultimately led to the forming of the Stormcloaks, as the Nords make a stand against the dishonouring of the Emperor's outlawing of their god, Talos. 
So Titus made the second signing, the White Gold Concordat created huge fractures in his empire and his own people. He was old and not a man to lead the empire to a stronger position. His only salvation was martyrdom. But why assassination? Why couldn't he do something else? Well, if he abdicated and stepped down as emperor, this would create political suspicion and even greater suspicion for the new emperor. If he committed suicide, he would have been seen as a coward and weaker than his people already thought he was. However, if he is assassinated, he will be seen as resilient and will remain a martyr, being a figure so dangerous and such a threat that he had to be assassinated. Not only would he achieve martyrdom, but he would also make way for a new, stronger and younger emperor, which does happen, as when you join the Imperial Legion, you have to swear to serve Emperor Titus Me II. However, if you've already killed Emperor Titus Me II and then you joined the Imperial Legion, you have to swear to serve the Emperor. Which means that yes, after his death, a new Emperor takes his place, even in Skyrim's timeline. So is the idea of Emperor Titus Me II organizing his own assassination to achieve martyrdom and ultimately save his empire, is that realistic? Yes, yes it is. Now let's discuss some of the finer details. Remember how I said I think there was another assassin on the Empress ship? Let's talk about that. So inside the ship there is a room next to a blacksmith's forge. In here we can find a sailor and a penitus oculatus guard sleeping on the bed. Uh, only he's not sleeping at all, he's dead. And this sailor's just happily sharing a room with a dead body. He's not doing anything one would do when in a room with a dead body. Oh yeah, and it's not just one dead body, as under the bed next to him there is another dead sailor stuffed under the mattress. So two dead bodies, one sailor and one a guard. I think it's 99% likely that this sailor who is alive is another assassin as there is also an alchemy table in this room, next to which is a potion of extended invisibility. Who would want to be invisible? I don't know, maybe an assassin? This guy probably snuck onto the ship using such an item, and once on the ship either crafted a new one, using this alchemy lab, or brought more with him. Once in the disguise, he'd use the other invisibility potion sneak up and slay the emperor. So why would there be an another assassin on the ship? Well, it's quite likely that Motia enlisted the assassination of the emperor, with more than just us, the Dark Brotherhood. There are two pieces of evidence to back this up. Firstly, when we meet him originally, he seems shocked that the Black Sacrament actually worked. By the almighty divines, you've come. You've actually come. This dreadful Black Sacrament thing, it worked. This could mean that he already hired at least one other assassin, as he didn't seem to be solely invested in relying on the Dark Brotherhood. And secondly, once the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary in Falkreath has been burned and we return to Motier to assure that he wants the contract fulfilled, he's shocked that we've survived. By the gods! You... you're alive! But I had heard... your sanctuary! So if he did think that we were dead, what would he do? hire another assassin. So it is likely that this sailor on the ship is actually another assassin hired by Motier to do the job, further proving that Motier essentially had infinite funds. It's almost as if he has the funds of, say, oh, I don't know, an emperor? Now while it would seem that Motier is someone seeking the emperor's assassination for his own political gains, Remember that jeweled amulet he gave us to cover the costs of assassinating Titus Mead II? Well, it's something much more than a jeweled amulet, as Delvin Mallory explains. Ah, oh, now you must be lost. Best you scurry off while you're able. The rat way, well, it has a habit of swallowing up the uninvited. Delvin, the Dark Brotherhood requires your services. Oh, oh I see. Well now, how is Astrid doing these days, huh? Tell her to stop by sometime. We can have a drink. Catch up. Ah, but we can discuss that later, eh? What does the Brotherhood need? I've brought you this. What can you tell me about this amulet? Let's see. Where, oh, where did you get this? No, don't answer. I don't want to know. This? is an amulet of the Emperor's Elder Council, specially crafted for each member who have a small fortune. 
Ain't something you give up lightly. Look, it ain't my business to tell the Dark Brotherhood it's business. But if you killed a member of the Elder Council, you better believe... Hush, Delvin, hush. All I need to know is will you buy it? Buy it? This? An Elder Council amulet? Oh yes. Oh yes indeed. So, it would appear that Motia is actually one of the Emperor's most trusted advisors, as he possesses an amulet of the Elder Council, as acquiring an amulet of the Elder Council is pretty much impossible unless you're on the Elder Council. It would be a million times harder to get your hands on an amulet of the Elder Council than it would to just get hold of the gold required to cover the costs of Titus Mede II's assassination. Therefore, the logical conclusion is that Motia is in fact giving the player his own personal Elder Council amulet. Now if he is on the Elder Council and the Emperor dies, he won't become Emperor, so it's unlikely he will gain any more or less power. It's more likely that Motia was one of Emperor Titus Mede II's most trusted council members, and was given the task of organising the Emperor's assassination at the Emperor's request. This actually makes complete sense, as when the Emperor is finally killed and you return to Motier and tell him this, he will respond as such. Aha! You're back! Titus Mede II lies dead. My friend, you may not realise it, but you have served the Empire. Indeed, all of Tamriel in ways you cannot possibly imagine. Now this again fits 100% into this theory perfectly. Martyrdom, dying a martyr, making way for a stronger, more loved and younger emperor to rule the empire and lead it to greater places. Now as the emperor quests just before you kill him, you can also kill Motier. So, I ask of you a favour. <laughs> An old man's dying wish. While there are many who would see me dead, there is one who set the machine in motion. This person, whomever he or she may be, must be punished for their treachery. Once you've been rewarded for my assassination, I want you to kill the very person who ordered it. Would you do me this kindness? Well, we can do this, and as he dies, he says something very interesting. We had a deal. <sighs> but we had a deal. Is he talking to us? Or is he talking to the Emperor? Does the Emperor want revenge for his assassination? Or does the Emperor want to tie up loose ends with his own complicated political plot? An interesting thought. Now even more interestingly, Motia's bodyguard, Rexus, won't attack you when you kill him, despite saying that he was born to protect Motia. So perhaps Rexus is the true loyal friend of the Emperor, and his name has got me very suspicious. Rexus. Rex in Latin means king. And us, on the end of a word in Latin, can sometimes mean new. Rexus. New King. How creepy is that? Although that example is rare. More commonly, us as a suffix means masculine. So, Rexus, a manly king, or, you know, a stronger, more dominant and fit king will replace Titus Me the Second. It's a very suspicious name you have there, Rexus, especially for a character involved with an Emperor's assassination, especially when it's woven in with this even more suspicious self-regicidal conspiracy. Rexus, I got my eye on you. Now once you actually do get around to picking up your reward for killing Emperor Titus Mead II, it will be 20,000 gold. Again. It's almost as if Motier had the funding of the Emperor. So in conclusion, Emperor Titus Me II realises he won't live long enough to see the next Great War, which is undoubtedly coming as the Thalmor won't rest until all of mankind has been eradicated. And even if he does live to see the next Great War, his tainted reputation washes away any chance of people rallying behind him. He can't commit suicide or the Empire would seem weaker than ever. He can't abdicate because of the unmeasurable political suspicion this would create. So he needs another way. 
and the plot unfolds. The Emperor Titus Me II, he's coming to Skyrim. Then he cancels his journey because it's too dangerous. Now remember that, it's too dangerous before anyone's killed. So then his cousin Vittoria Vici is assassinated at her own wedding in solitude. So what does the Emperor do? He travels to Solitude, the very city where his cousin was killed. Then the Emperor is assassinated by some of my famous bad cooking. But ha! Ah, it turns out that this was the Emperor's body double and the real Emperor has been saved, thank the Divines. Not tell us though, because he outlawed it, the prick. Wow, good thing the Emperor dodged that bullet. So if there's one place the Emperor would never go now, it's Solitude. Uh, and what does the real Emperor do? Now that his cousin has been assassinated in solitude, and his body double has been assassinated in solitude, that's right, Emperor Titus Me II makes the worst move possible and heads straight to solitude. Hmm, it's almost as if he wants to be assassinated. It's almost as if he knew he needed to be assassinated. He rocks up in solitude eh, with minimal security. Then when you meet him, he's reading a book about the Dark Brotherhood. Yes, that's right. The Brothers of Darkness, the Dark Brotherhood book. The Emperor was reading it when you rocked up into his chambers to kill him. Out of all the books in Skyrim, that's the one he was reading. Hmm, hmm, hmm. A little bit suspicious. He says that he's been waiting for you. Then he literally just turns around, looks out the window while we assassinate him. Could this guy be any more helpful? Again, it's almost as if he wanted to be assassinated. It's almost as if he knew that he needed to be assassinated. It's almost as if he set up his own assassination. All the puzzle pieces fit. There's no denying that. At this point, it's just a matter of plot taste. Now, I do hope that you have enjoyed this seemingly crazy theory that actually makes a hell of a lot of sense. Equally so, I do hope that you have learnt something new about the beautifully mad universe that these wonderful games take place in, the Elder Scrolls. But most importantly of all, what do you think happened? Do you think Emperor Titus Me II organized his own assassination? Whatever your thoughts are, leave them down below with an explanation so that we can discuss this theory together. If you do have any information, facts, evidence, speculation, theories, or anything to do with this very interesting political plot, be sure to leave a comment down below. If you do have any ideas for something that you think I should cover in an Elder Scrolls Detective series video, be sure to let me know. I'll look into whatever strange and wonderful topics you present. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a kindness and leave a like and share it with your friends. Drop some knowledge on them. Leave a comment down below with your Elder Scrolls detective ideas and your thoughts on Emperor Titus Me II. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos similar to this one, please subscribe. It helps me know that people enjoy these kind of videos and in the long run will result in more of them. When you subscribe, be sure to click the little bell icon next to the subscribe button right here on YouTube so that you are notified when new Elder Scrolls Detective videos are uploaded. Now links to my other Elder Scrolls Detective videos can be found down in the description along with links to my social media. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. And if you would like to support the channel in a more personal way, you can become a patron on Patreon. As I'm sure you know, all of my time and energy goes into making these videos that I create for you to enjoy, so your support is most appreciated and welcomed in any and all forms. Feel free to check out the playlist on screen, thank you for watching, thank you for supporting the channel, and I'll see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.